Just a homeowner here with a leaky seal conk that I've decided to replace myself. I picked up this Shark Bite 12 inch frost free unit from Lowe's, but I've also decided to increase the difficulty in this project by adding a ball valve shut off on the inside as well as a hose bib. Come along to see if your average homeowner can tackle this project with zero experience. I decided to break up this project into sections with the first being installing the ball valve shut off. This way I could turn the water back onto the house, then turn it off at the new shut off. This will allow me all the time needed to figure out how to install all the other pieces. The first step here is to shut off the water to the house and drain the lines. To drain the lines, I'll find the lowest water source and open the valve and let it drain. My lowest source is the spigot on the back of the house. I'm not sure if there's some type of code that states how high shutoffs need to be, I'm sure there is, but I figured I'd just measure the main cutoff and then carry that over to the new one. If you're doing this at your house, I would suggest you look into your codes, but in my case the main one is 67 inches, so we're going to carry that over to the new one and make it 67 inches as well. This water line is a half inch copper pipe, so I'll be using my Husky copper tubing cutter. These little gizmos can be adjusted to cut different diameters, with this one cutting up to 1 and 1 8 inch pipe. I'll leave a link in the description to a better one that has a smaller profile for tighter spaces like this. The way you use this tool is you tighten it down so that the cutters come in contact with the pipe, rotate it a few turns, then tighten again, rotate a few more turns, and then tighten again, and so on and so forth. Don't over tighten too soon or you could bend the pipe or damage the tool. Quick tip, be careful here, the edges of that newly cut copper is very sharp. When I changed out my water heater I learned that the hard way and had to pull out the Flintstone band-aids. And this is how the cutter adjusts. And I'm going to cut this pipe here, which will give me a good sized piece of scrap in case I need to use it later. When I cut this, the cutter creates a burr on the inside, as you can see here. On the pieces that remain, I have to use a deburr tool so that it doesn't cause any issues with my shark bot attachments. If you watched my water heater video, then you know that I skipped this step, which caused my shark bite supply lines to fail almost immediately. All right, we got all the burrs out of the inside. Now we got to take care of the outside. They do make a tool for this, which I will link in the description, but you can also use sandpaper like here. Here's a quick close up of the shut off just to show you how the ball valve works. This is a half inch to half inch shark bite shut off which can be used with both copper and PEX. This is important because we'll switch over to PEX from this shut off. This is only my second time using shark bites and it does take a bit of force to get it going but you'll eventually feel it slide into place. It does help to understand how far the shark bite slides over the tubing that way you know when it's securely seated. This chart here shows that our half inch tubing should seat almost one inch. And in this upcoming diagram of a shark bite feeding, you can see that shark bites do have stops on the inside, which tells you when you're completely in. Now let's turn the water back on and see if this is working. Alright, after a close inspection, I don't feel any water either at the shark bite or up here near the other fittings, so it's time to move on to the next step, which is remove the old hose bib and install the new one. Now, I've never taken one of these off, but it can't be too hard. We've got a, a screw here, and then we've got a couple of nuts here that will wrench off, and surely this thing will just slide right out. All right, easy enough. Now I think this is where my leak was coming from. I'm not sure if that copper piece is supposed to slide off that easy or be bent. If you're familiar with the design of these silcocks, these frost-free silcocks, let me know if this is normal or if this was my issue. I 
I'll tell you what, I am amazed at how strong this mortar holds. I would have loved to do mortar again, but I feared I'd make a mess of it. So I went with a product called the Bib Buddy, um, and I'll talk about that a little bit later. But it does look like here there was an 8-inch frost-free uh, seal caulk used in the past with uh, the copper um, soldered inside the brick there. So what we went with here was a 12-inch seal caulk in the shark bout form, which kind of gives us um, what we want. So we don't really want that um, shark bite connection to be within the brick. And we'll put a little tape here on the end to keep that shark bite fitting from getting damaged as we shove it through the brick and the uh, center block here. The 12 inch length ended up being perfect. That'll keep us from making our shark bite connection within the wall. And that is the end of the footage of the seal caulk. I ended up making a dedicated video on the Bib Buddy installation since that is one of the more involved processes in the project. I'll link it above and also in the description in case you want to check that out. Now we're on to the home stretch. I have to install blocking, pecs, a few shark bite fittings, and the indoor hose bib. One of the advantages with the old setup was we could make this 90 degree turn closer to the wall. With the shark bite setup, I have to add a small piece of PEX to secure to the seal caulk and then to the 90 degree fitting. That's making this setup stick out about 2 inches further. I got this PEX cutting tool at Home Depot for $10 and I'll leave a link to a similar cutter in the description. I could have cut more pecs off, but I wanted to leave it the distance of a 2x4. That way I could kind of sister one on top of that one. And here I'm going to measure for my long stretch of pecs. Now we got our long piece installed and we're going to go ahead and add in a T connection that way we can add a hose bib over to the right. Now we're going to pre-drill some blocking that way we can use tap cons and secure it to the wall and we'll have something for our indoor hose bib to attach to. Here I'm drilling through my pre-drilled holes so that I can make marks on the center block so I know where my tap cons go. And then here on the drill bit I have added tape so I know how deep I need to go with my drill. I'm always amazed at how strong of a hold these tap cons have.
All right, this thing here is extra secure. Now we got to finish up adding the packs. One thing I didn't consider is how difficult it is when you're working with your last pieces of packs to get everything installed and get it in there that one inch that it needs to go. You can see right there I had to grip it on both sides and give it some muscle to really get it in there. And that's difficult when you're working with this last little connection right here. As you can tell, that barely went in. Uh, we may have to revisit this, but I'm going to go ahead and get this other side connected, and then we'll come back to that. So I don't think this piece is in there good, but let's go ahead and turn the water on and see if we'll get lucky. Oh, yep. No luck to be had here. So let's go ahead and cut us a longer piece and see if we can get this in there a little bit better. Yeah, see that, that was barely in there. That was not gonna work. But now we gotta take this other piece out. This side is in there and it's uh, very um, challenging at this angle to get this out. But uh, I, wor I work with it for about five or 10 minutes and then this is the clip of me actually getting it out. Just know it was not that easy. Well, seems we got another leak. Let's uh, try to fix this one. Now, I felt that one move quite a bit, so I think that one was a lot easier than the first one. And, yep, no more leaks. All right, I did leave the water pressure on for a while just to make sure there's no leaks. Everything turned out really well. If you enjoyed this video, think about giving it a thumbs up and subscribing. Again, I'm a DIY homeowner. I'm doing stuff that I've never done before, uh, and it gives you the opportunity to watch me make the errors so that you don't have to. See you on the next one.